Second term underway. Platten off, and I would suspect out of the grand final. Deer gets the knock against his new opponent, Flanagan, but the Cats win the ball as Tuck was dispossessed and Bruns takes it. Kicks uh, Geelong into attack with the left boot. Ablett runs onto the bouncing ball. Tries to burn McGuinness off with a burst of acceleration. Gets a bit of support from Stoneham, who now runs onto a bouncing ball. Hesitated for a moment when he heard the whistle, but the umpire calls play on, and Stoneham's kick hits the post. That was a beautiful curling drop putt. It looked as though it was going to curl all the way home, but it just flattened out at the last moment and kept going into the post for a behind. But a promising start by Geelong in the first 40 seconds. I'll tell you what, uh, the Hawks have got Andrew Buse in. He just wants to push and shove and scratch all the time rather than play footy. Kick in by Langford, and Yates from behind Kennedy has taken a superb mark about a kick and a quarter out. No one home, so maybe it'll be Ablett. Ablett doubling back with the flight of the ball. Punched away by McGuinness. Brownless goes in, uses good weight. Punches the ball beside the pack, but no one marks. But Condon, Condon now clears for Hawthorne. Has a bounce. Runs up towards centre-half back. Kicks towards the southern side where Bruns is there for, for Geelong and uh, has taken the mark. Started the second quarter well with a couple of kicks. Now he kicks to half forward. Well placed too, although uh, well done by Collins for... Hawthorne who wins a free kick. I thought Couch had the sit on him. Collins used the body very well. Placed himself perfectly and finished up drawing a free. He takes it at half back. Kick doesn't quite reach the wing and in fact it's a shocker out of bounds on the full. And the free kick will go to Lindner. So the Cats peppering away now at the start of the second quarter. He goes to a lead from Flanagan and good strong hands by the big fellow who's come off the interchange bench as Deer from behind was trying to spoil but Durr in front took the mark and at the 50 metre line, I think the distance is beyond him, but he can certainly put it into scoring territory. Looks as though he's having a shot. Kicks from 55. High drop punt, dropping in the square. Stone him up, takes a beauty. Oh, this champion young centre half board was down in the first quarter. But as I've said during the finals, he is a very fast learner and don't write him out of this match yet. And if he gets firing, Crackers don't write Geelong off because he could lead them and lead them back into it. Maybe even to the promised land yet. He's only about five metres out but on a very acute angle as he kicks for Geelong's third. And he puts it through, I think. Goal umpire confers with the field umpire. There will be another kick. He missed and he'll have another kick. Playing over the mark, Tim. Yes, and a penalty. So a, a 50 metre penalty effectively brings the man on the mark back to the goal line but it doesn't reduce the angle of approach. Now it shouldn't, Swan Mackay. The ruling is that for uh, penalties, the angle of approach isn't altered. Because that's the rule. That's the way the rule is framed. That you still kick from the angle on which you took the mark. And Stoneham will have another shot, this time from point blank range. Now I've praised his uh, rapid learning skills. I suspect he'll learn from the first kick and make sure of it this time. Now he lines them up again. Mew standing right on the goal line and Stoneham puts it right through the middle. So 3 minutes 20, 200 seconds into the second quarter. The Cats get their third goal and they're 3-1-19. Hawthorne 8-4-52. The difference is 33 points. Yes, and some positive signs uh, for the Cats at the, for that, at the three minute mark. And I think firstly, they are Bruns with a couple of uh, kicks, which is good because Pleasant he's got back... the dressing room, Stan. Oh yes, he is too. Doesn't look too well. Secondly, I think that uh, Flanagan already has had uh, more of an influence uh, on, on the game uh, by his, uh, uh, what can I say, intelligent leading and dropping in there when everybody thinks they were going to kick the ball long to the big men. And, of course, the other one, Stoneham with a couple of touches in the three minutes, which will do him well. But for the Geelong team, those three players having an influence within the first three minutes would be a big plus. And as well as that, with, the, the, I guess, the side of Johnny Platten, the great Johnny Platten being led into the, into the rooms. Uh, he's, he's in awful trouble. Rubber legs and I reckon maybe a broken jaw. From the centre bounce, Flanagan, who's played pretty well since he came on, winning one of the ball is Buse. 65 metres out from goal, down towards Ablett and McGuinness. <laughs> Flanagan's made the difference, Crackers. Yes, he certainly has, and he's getting the ball out of the centre, and I might have to eat the old words, Peter, but absolute magnificent mark. Applett, running back with a flight of the ball, has taken a screamer here at the MCG. He's on the boundary line. Using it's the banana. Very, the banana, it's uh, very hard. The angle, he has put it through. So the Cats get two goals in the first four and a half minutes of the second term. And they might be back in town. Hawthorne, 8-4-52. Geelong, 4-1-25. So when you take Platten out of the centre, and when you bring Flanagan on, he couldn't... Burke was travelling probably about third class. 
and all of a sudden a little transformation has come over this match yes it really has and uh, that's the beauty of the cats though of course with all that firepower they really have always you must give them a chance to get back in the game bad bounce from umpire Carey the Hawks win the ball through Deer who gets a little left foot kick towards centre half forward it's a bouncing ball an awkward one uh, Yates runs onto it rather Schultz for Geelong makes a bit of a mess of it picked up by Cameron who kicks it the wrong way Bacanara under it and takes the mark 15 metres out as Cameron in haste under pressure grand final pressure had to kick in the greatest hurry of his life and because he did the ball went backwards it skewed off the outside of his boot and fell straight into the arms of Bacanara right in front of goal 15 metres out so the Hawks now with a golden opportunity to just stem Geelong's mini run Bucky kicks and puts it through as the brown and gold streamers go up under the scoreboard Geelong kicked too early, but the Hawks have hit back with one, and then 9-4-58, Geelong 4-1-25, the difference 33 points at the six-minute mark. Yes, and there was a, uh, something I was told very early in my league career. If you win the ball on the back line, you never, ever turn to the centre. And yet on two occasions, we had Schultz and then Cameron win the ball. Schultz in is coming off stand. In desperate situations, you always turn to the boundary so that your kick at least can go out of the danger zone. But both those players, that is just a... a Yates to centre half back. Hamilton on the wing from the centre bounce. And uh, getting the ball out of the centre is Anderson. Marking it as Kennedy kicks the ball up towards the forward pocket. Brereton takes a terrific mark. He was behind Stephen Hocking. Why, why leave Hocking on him, Tommy? You mentioned it. I mean, it's glaring. Well, Boss would probably be the player to stop back there. Now that Dermot's not at centre half forward and he's in the pocket, he's just going to take marks over Stephen. Stephen's a great crumb getter. This boy is one of the best players in football, Dermot. High mark and his forte, and he's having his third shot at goal. 30 metres out from goal, 45 degree angle, main scoreboard and he's hooked it to the left, it won't be a goal and a little reprieve there for Geelong as Brereton has missed and has kicked two goals, one. Hawthorne 9-5, Geelong 4-1, just edging past seven minutes in the second quarter. Believe it or not, the record tells me that uh, Brereton and Hocking both stand 186 centimetres but there's no doubt who is the better aerialist as Darcy puts the ball back into play with a high drop punt, not a probing, searching kick. There's a push in the back and a Geelong free kick goes to Buse at the 50-metre line. That kick didn't cover enough ground. Buse kicks towards a lead from uh, Stoneham, and he's marked again out in front of Mew. He's the man to lead them back into the game as he drops it short for Gary Hocking. Front position, good spoil, Collins. Brings the ball down the tail. Pushing the backs over the commentators. Tuck bursts away with the ball and kicks to the centre line. Good spoil by Boss. Gives Bruns the run of the ball. Oh, great smother by Dippy at Domenico. Ball loose, taken by Scott for Geelong. Hand pass to Linda. The game was a frenzy. Linda fumbled, saw them coming. And there were plenty coming too. Onto the ball, Bacanara. Paddle to Anderson. Couldn't get it at the first grab. Gets it at the second. Finds Curran with a bouncing kick. Hand pass to Morrissey. Hand pass on towards another teammate, Whitman. He lines up the sticks from 30 metres out and misses should have been a goal the Hawks could have kicked three or four more then 9 6 60 the Cats are 4 1 25 the difference 35 points eight and a half minutes second quarter what do you make of it Tom well I suppose uh, Stoneham's coming into the game a little bit but uh, Hawthorne just keep on putting the opposition under pressure and you saw they outnumbered them once again in the force the error Hawthorne by 35 points and Geelong will have to play uh, catch-up football all day. Kick in by Darcy, back an hour up high, couldn't mark. The ball spills, knocked out by Yates. Taken by Morrissey, he was claimed by Boz. The ball comes to Curran, kicks in towards centre-half forward, about 25 metres out from goal. Up goes Darcy. A chance there for Stephen Hawking to get the hand pass out to Buse. Oh, he's too slow. And the loose ball spills towards the forward pocket. Brereton might kick a goal. In fact, he has. He got a push in the back, he'll receive the free kick if it wasn't a goal, but from two metres out he couldn't have missed. He kicks his third goal, all clear being given, and this might be another one-sided grand final the way it's going. But certainly, uh, Burke in the first term, along with Couch and now Buse and Cameron a short time ago, making blatant errors and costing dearly. Hawthorne 10-6, Geelong 4-1, Stanley. Yeah, and there's a, an example of why I think that Jason Dunsell's a great player. That tackle that he laid on Andrew Buse was just absolutely tremendous. And that was the reason why the ball spilled and Brereton kicked the goal.
play restarts. Flanagan gets the knock for Geelong. Running onto the ball is Cameron, who uh, gets a scrambled kick out of the centre, but it goes straight to Ayres, who clears for Hawthorne to the centre line. It uh, bounces before anyone can arrive. Whitman first there, but overran it. C Couch takes the bouncing ball. Ball hand passes again to nobody as they were bearing down. Picked off the, kicked off the ground by Buse, but straight to Tuck. From the centre line, he goes out to the wing to Kennedy, who's running with the flight. Gets an atrocious bounce, taken by Cameron. Hand pass to the running Lindner. From the centre line, he's tackled just before he can get the kick, and the Hawks tackling is the difference. Tuck dives over the ball on halfback, loses it. Couch a great hand pass to Hamilton. It bounces for him. He kicks with the left boot to Ablett. Down the got it. Relay free kick anyway, but Ablett's got it. 45 out, but on a very difficult angle. Left half forward flank. Suits the right foot kick, won't have to use the banana this time. He's kicked two of Geelong's four. Don't they need it? He kicks, he kicks well, it's a magnificent kick and full marks to the champion. He's in the cauldron like he's never been in there before and yet he's risen to the occasion with three goals in about 40 minutes of play. Hawthorne 10 6 66, Geelong 5 1 31. Yes, and uh, he really is a magnificent player. The, the problem, of course, today is they've got to get the ball down there enough. But, um, look, the Cats have made some terrible unforced errors, but the thing about them, they're still pushing up, pushing up. Now, Paul Couch it was a terrible handball uh, j just previous to that uh, sortie where they kicked the goal, but he still went in and redeemed himself, and he was instrumental in handballing the ball out again. Back in the centre once again. Deere gets to knock with better judgment, but goes to Cameron of Geelong. They go forward. Ayres is there. Clean bowled at centre-half uh, uh, centre back. Ablett uh, almost a push in the back. Picked up by Hamilton. He's given him a bit of life since he came on a few minutes ago. Down towards Buys. One grab, but not the second. And the ball is out of bounds, right forward pocket at the punt road goal. Hawthorne 10 6 66. Geelong a 5 1 31. 12 minutes in the second quarter of the 89 VFL Grand Final. Flanagan in ruck. The two 14s, Flanagan and Deer. The boundary throw in. Ablett comes from behind, takes the ball out of the air, kicks towards goal, and has kicked his foot. The two tallest players on the ground, Deer and oh. Flanagan, and Ablett backed his judgment from the throw-in, soared above them, grabbed the ball, and kicked it through for his fourth goal. Can I say, that won't be uh, photographed, and it won't stand the test of time like Jezelenko's mark, but it might have exactly the same effect. That's very likely. He's kicked four goals in, what, about 35 minutes of play. That was unbelievable. At the centre bounce, Ablett is lifting the Cats back. Flanagan the knock, but straight to Pritchard. Cats have got numbers, though, on the defensive side of the pack, and the short kick is marked by Lindner between half-back and centre. It's 37 to 66. The Cats are clawing back and trail by 29 points. He goes short. Oh, it's a bad kick. Put Couch under pressure, and Tuck takes it away from him. Kicks towards half-forward. Now, the Cats seem to have weighted their back line. They have numbers all across the half-back line, and the kick to half-forward is uh, picked up by uh, Malakellis, who kicks to half-forward. Ayres takes the crumb off the pack and clears for Hawthorne. Out towards the members' wing. Malakellis unable to mark. Boss dives after the ball. No one there to take a hand pass. Hawthorne have got the numbers. Morrissey comes away with it. Kicks to half forward to Brereton, who runs under it. Out come Darcy and Dunstall. Darcy for once front position. Great tackle by Dunstall. Darcy has to hand pass out in front of him. And the ball is over the line for a throw in. Although Dunstall hung on for a long time. And the umpire has given the, uh, or the umpires have given the tacklers great liberty. Hawthorne by 29 points, 13, 14 minutes in the quarter. From the boundary throw in, Karen takes the ball, but uh, bumped by Yates. The ball at their feet, and umpire uh, Brian Sheehan will call for a bounce. Hawthorne 10 6 66, Geelong 6 1 37. The Hawks led by 40 points at quarter time and lead by 29 points now, midway through this second quarter. There's uh, the ball up, Karen there, but uh, not contesting as Yates came front on. Hand pass out of the pack to Malakella. See and turn to Stephen Hocking. Runs into trouble, gets the handball to Hamilton. He doesn't accept it. And they're really playing tight football, Hawthorne. There's going to be a free kick on the point of the square at centre-half back. The advantage is paid. And it's Boss who will clear the ball from centre-half back towards half-forward. Brownless is there. Runs into a player. That's Mew. Loose ball spills to Condon. Condon's on the half-back line. Rebound football, Pritchard is there, tries to keep it in, but I don't know whether he really did it in the finish because he had no one to tap it across to except two Geelong players side to him. Yes, Tommy? Langford is now picking up Gary Ablett. There's the first change for Gary. It'll be interesting to see how many players he has during the course of the afternoon. McGuinness on Brownless at the throw-in. 
The Cats are there in numbers as Lindner gets the knock. Brereton in there boxing for Hawthorne. Not literally. Ball uh, surrounded by players at the moment. I can't see the footy. Now there'll be a ball up, up towards Hawthorne's half-forward line. 15 minutes in. The Hawks by 29 points. And the Cats still trying to do Cadinia Park things on the MCG in the last Saturday in September. At the bounce, Curran flies for Hawthorne and gets a beautiful knock to Tuck. A hand pass backwards to Anderson. A kick to a swarm of Hawthorne players. Only Darcy against them. It bounces for Dunstall. He can't keep it in play. He got a flick of the ball onto Morrissey who ran into the open goal, but the boundary umpire said the ball had crossed the line before Dunstall got it back in. So we'll see a throw in. But Hawthorne deep in attack. And even though the Cats have reduced the lead, just in general play, it's still the Hawks doing everything right and the Cats making a lot of errors. Throw in Hawthorne deep in their attacking zone. Half a shade of Wayne Harms there. Boundary throw in, 40 metres out from goal. The ball flicked behind by Curran to Pritchard. Kicks in towards goal and it's through for a behind to Hawthorne. Kicked by Darren Pritchard, his second behind. 16 minutes in the second quarter. Hawthorne 10-7, Geelong 6-1. Now Geelong need to get a move here as Linda leads up towards centre-half back. Darcy's looking for Linda. Anderson is there, although, let's see, the ball flicked away by, uh, by Pritchard. Picked up by Couch. Handball on towards Hamilton. On the point of the square at half forward. Looking for Ablett. Using his body beautifully. Not this time as he fell back. He takes nine out of ten, but not that one. Loose ball goes to Mew. Mew's clearing kick from centre half back up towards the wing where it's been marked by Robert Dippy Domenico. The ball just fell in his lap. As two players flew high in front of him, they both missed it. Now the big dipper now from half-back, kicks towards uh, Deer, he won't be there. Yates is there, Yates has got the front position, claimed by Curran, good tackle. Although uh, Yates did retain position, handball to Flanagan, kicks to, uh, to Hamilton on the half-forward line. Little chip pass in towards the forward pocket, here's a chance for Buse. 40 metres out from goal, kicks it and has put it through for another Geelong goal, kicked by Andrew Buse. And Geelong get within four goals of the mighty Hawthorne team. They're clawing their way back. Hawthorne 10 7 67. Geelong 7 1 43. Crackers. Well, it's a magnificent uh, performance, especially by young Shane Hamilton, who, since he's come on, Peter's really given a little bit of a spark. They're starting to run a little bit. They're settled down. And that was a very, very good goal, and they really needed it then. And I just, maybe there's a spark there, but they've just got to keep trying. They've got to get a bit more out of Stoneham up there. Ablett's doing the job, but Stoneham's got to do a little bit better. The margin four goals. It was 40 points. It's the closest the Cats have been for a long time, but Dipper puts Hawthorne into attack. Bouncing ball beats the pack. Dunstall leads uh, Darcy. Double hands it to Pritchard, lines them up. And for the second time in about two minutes, he misses. One with a check side punt. That one with a hook shot from out on the half forward flank. And at the 18-minute mark, it's Hawthorne by 25 points. But golly, if the Cats could cut it by two more goals between now and half-time, and they've got ample time, they're right in the grand final. The kick-in by Yates, they've almost halved their uh, quarter-time deficit, and the foot pass finds Flanagan, who has done immeasurably better than uh, the skipper Damien Burke in the first quarter. He's taken the ball off Flanagan, is he? No, I don't think he is. Umpire Kerry went across and spoke to Flanagan. He's got the ball on the 50-metre line. He's defending on the southern side. Kicks around uh, that wing. Collins is there. The ball comes to Stoneham. No one to hand pass it to. The ball comes back to himself. He in turn then a hand pass to Buse. Buse uh, kicks the ball towards uh, the wing where it's been marked by Whitman. Now Whitman on the centre wing. Sun blazing on the MCG. Beautiful day. Kicks towards half forward. Brereton clever use of the body. Let his opponent underneath it. Curran's coming out, but he's running the wrong way. Throws the ball almost over his head. Pritchard... Uh, Bumped solidly by Yates. The loose ball comes. Here come uh, the, the, the Cats again. Linda. Linda gets the handball across to Hamilton, who's having a decided effect on this game. Brownless comes out almost on the half volley. Can't mark. And there'll be a boundary throw in about a kick and a half out from goal for the Cats into attack. 68 plays 43. Hawthorne leads by 25 points. 19 minutes second quarter. Crucial 11 or 12 minutes in this match now. The period between now and half time at the throw in. A real battle for the ball, and it eventually is won by Bacanara, who is felled by Brownless, who I'm sure will be reported. No, he won't. Bacanara went down holding his head as uh, Brownless got him just after he kicked, and the umpire came racing towards the scene but didn't make a report. Relayed free kick had to be on. It goes to Morrissey, who kicks to half board. Player goes down. Shepherding is the infringement. It's a Geelong free kick on the half-back line. 
very difficult game to umpire and a lot of decisions have been a little confusing. Linda kicks towards uh, the centre, over the centre line. A stone him up from behind, can't mark. Cameron, a lovely hand pass in front of the 19-year-old Hamilton. Kennedy bearing down, tackles well, forces a bad kick and it bounces on the wrong side of the line. So over, out of bounds on the full, free kick to the Hawks in the back pocket. Hawthorne 10-8, Geelong 7-1, 20 minutes in the second quarter. Kick by Langford, short up the ground towards Buckenara, but he's got to come back over the mark. He's in the left uh, back pocket at the punt road end. He shapes to uh, foot pass to Buckenara again, who's been picked up this time by Gary Hocking. He's got the sun in his eyes. Now the kick by Langford, holding up. Let's see who's going to mark. Stone from behind, punched the ball in front. Gary Hocking's there, but went without the ball. The ball hand passed out of the pack by a Hawthorne player. Knocked down by Stoneham. A chance here for Gary Hocking. Nicely gets it across to Bairstow. Tackled high, but allowed to play on. Kicks towards half forward. Scott is there. Also Brownless. Scott stayed down where he should. Whitman loses possession. Picked up by Hamilton. No, not quite. Good harassment by Collins. Adlett goes in. Hand passes back to Buse. He's 45 metres out from goal. From the standing start. It won't have the legs. So I don't think it's going to be a bit short. Buse there. Well, knocked down by Counts. And the ball kicked through from behind by by Brownless and a behind to Geelong in a very likely move by the Cats. Geelong 7-2, Hawthorne 10-8. Magnificent play by Couch to fly and not just try and spoil, but to keep the ball back in play and it very nearly created a goal. Now, Kennedy to put it back in for Hawthorne, not used to this role, and uh, stutters and stumbles and then kicks to the southern halfback flank to Deer, who has two against him. Crumb taken by Linda, who puts a hand pass out in front of himself. Goes back to it, shrugs a tackle, kicks the ball towards full forward. Stone in front position, but he's outmarked from behind by McGuinness. Splendid mark from the young Hawk, who almost couldn't play because of that ankle injury. And despite the sun and the blue skies wearing long sleeves, Stoneham that time misjudged the flight, and McGuinness took it well in the very last line of defence. Now, McGuinness goes, uh, redirects play to the southern side of the MCG where he has found Collins, who's marked. It's been a five goal to two quarter by the Cats this term. Collins's kick is a poor one. Bacanara does well to knock it on towards the running tuck. Good shepherding behind play and fair shepherding by Mew. Kick by tuck up towards the practice pitch area. Push in the back. And a push in the back to Brereton. He's going to get a free kick. He's about two kicks out from goal. Between the wing and half forward, southern side of the MCG. Hawthorne 10 8, Geelong 7 2. The lead from Dunstall. He goes for that lead. Dunstall in towards the pocket and one grab, but not the second. In fact, uh, he ran out of territory and the ball is out of bounds for a boundary throw in. 40 metres away from uh, Hawthorne's goal. It's been five goals to uh, the Cats this quarter, two goals to the Hawthorne team. The boundary throw in. The ball spills behind towards Condon. Couldn't do much with it. Uh, Couch loses possession, Anderson battling hard, Pritchard comes in, through the pack goes Couch again, hand pass doesn't find its mark, coming through is Bacanara, is he tripped from behind, he may have been professionally, he doesn't get the free kick, and there'll be a ball up about 60 metres out from goal. Now it was a great tackle by Linda, who surged at him from behind and brought him down with a wonderful tackle, inspiring stuff. Now a ball up on Hawthorne's half-forward flank. We're 23 minutes in, so a period of lull. There hasn't been a goal for about six minutes. A long time in the context of this match. 17 already in the first half. At the bounce, Brereton a good knock. Straight to Pritchard, but there was a tackler waiting for him, Buse. Ball prize free. Brereton had it. He was tackled too and couldn't break clear. And umpire Carey will have to come in and bounce again on Hawthorne's left half-forward flank, but a good 60 metres, 65 from goal, over on the southern side of the ground, and the MCG is a sight. Sun beating down, lovely day in Melbourne. At the bounce, Brereton climbs high and gets a good knock for Hawthorne, straight to Bacanara, who twists and turns, hand passes backwards, gives a chance to uh, his teammates, but Buse comes away with the ball for Geelong. See Scott leading into the centre. Scott running onto a bouncing ball, but Mew comes the other way and takes it. Gives a hand pass to Kennedy. Tackled by Stoneham, hand pass back to Mew under pressure. And the Cats now starting to swarm in numbers. Stoneham picks up the ball. Oh. Hand pass to Linda, who's tackled high and takes the free. He gets a lead on the half board line from Flanagan. And the big fellow marks and runs on from inside 50. He goes for home. It's off direction, out to the pocket and out of bounds on the full. A free kick to McGuinness, but the Cats are definitely lifting. They're starting to hustle the Hawks off the ball. They're getting there in greater numbers and looking much more impressive. Hawthorne lead by 24 points. McGuinness can see Collins across goal. He is tempted, uh, but not for long. From the punt road uh, back pocket, 
kicks the ball, Flanagan is there, the ball spills behind, Hocking claims the Hawthorne player who went to ground, and there'll be a ball up. 24 and a half minutes, second quarter of the VFL Grand Final. A Hawthorne at 10-8, Geelong 7-2. But after Hawthorne kicked eight goals to two in the first term, it's been 5-2 Geelong's way so far this quarter with uh, about uh, five minutes remaining. From the ball up, Tuck working the ball towards the boundary. It spills to uh, Gary Ayres. Ayres picks it up, a left foot kick, a high one. Around uh, our broadcast wing, Boss is there, didn't punch the ball away. Morris, Morris is marked. Now Morrissey for Hawthorne on the wing. Running down the ground is Pritchard. And Pritchard's taken a good mark. He's on the end of that kick. Runs up towards 60 metres. Squares the ball towards Dunstall. It's in a half board. Darcy was running the wrong way, his opponent. And it was good vision there by Pritchard to spot Dunstall at centre half board. Terrific understanding. And Dunstall is marked. Had about five metres to spare on his opponent. 40 metres out directly in front. And Mark Boss being spoken to by the runner. I would imagine he'd be getting a bollocking for not spoiling on the wing. The kick by Dunstall is true. And in to the 30-second mark of time on, Hawthorne get their third goal for the quarter. And they take a 30-point lead close to half-time. Hawthorne 11-8 and Geelong 7 goals to Dunstall kicks his second. Yeah, and that's uh, what really just uh, rips a, a coach apart. I mean, when he looks at his side like the Cats have clawed their way back and have lifted their performance in every area, and then to have one of your defenders who should know better fail to punch from behind, and as a result, the man in front takes a mark, he passes the ball on down, end result is six points to the opposition that just shouldn't have happened. Deer favoured by the bounce, gets the knock to Condon, kicks Hawthorne into attack, Malakellis, oh, could have been paid the mark, it wasn't paid, Morrissey runs onto the ball, saw a few coming, gets a hand pass to Whitman, who bursts clear, goes for goal with the left boot and puts it through for another one for the Hawks. So just when the Cats looked as though they were edging back. And how many times do we say this about Hawthorne and the teams that uh, are on the wrong end of it against them? Just when the Cats looked as though they were getting back, the Hawks have steadied with two fine goals and they lead by 36 points at the 27-minute mark. 12-8-80 to Geelong, 7-2-44, Tommy Hafey. You talk about Boss not punching that ball. Malakalis could have been played that mark. He should stick to the rules and the disciplines. If you're caught behind, you punch the ball, and that would have been then pushed up towards the centre, uh, up further into the square. So you, they've just got to play the Hawthorne by 36 points. 12-8 to 7-2. That's a six-goal margin close on half-time. Centre bounce again. Flanagan wins comprehensively. Stoneham came through but uh, went without the ball. Picked up by Kennedy. Hand passes back towards Ayres at centre half-back. Ayres now works it out to the wing where Tuck has taken the mark. Playing his 383rd game. Tuck has the bounce. Delays his kick to the last second. Kicks up towards 50. Oh, and a terrific mark. Should have been almost paid to Morrissey, but he... While he's on the ground, he gains his team some 20 metres by knocking it on towards Dunstall, who soccer's off the ground, has put it out of bounds on the full, and the free kick will be taken by Yates of Geelong. Hawthorne, 12-8, and Geelong, 7-2. I'll be interested to hear from Clelo at half-time on the umpiring. As I said, it has been a hard game, but, golly, there have been a lot of mystifying decisions, and uh, that did look like a mark. I thought Malakellis has certainly did uh, a little while ago as well, so one all in that regard. They're making them hard to get. Kick towards uh, half-back, and Flanagan takes a good mark with Deer against him. And the big fellow's given them some devil in the ruck. Bad kick. Wobbly old drop punt over the wing. Stoneham made a mess of it. Taken away from him by Mew. Hand pass backwards to Kennedy. Kick to the wing. Brereton comes after it. Oh! Ran straight at Bairstow with the shoulder dipped. And luckily for Bairstow, he missed. By the width of a cigarette paper. Three and a half minutes of time on in the second term. Hawthorne lead by 36 points. It's out of bounds in front of our broadcast position. Flanagan is there and Deer. Knocked down by Deer, I think, from behind. Coming through there is Boss. He's grabbed by Morrissey. Loose ball picked up by Gary Hocking. Oh, high tackle there. Must be a free kick to Geelong against Ayers. Oh, to Couch. It's not paid. Now, he spotted a free kick in the pack. And I think, uh, yes, Cameron. David Cameron's had his number taken. And Dean Anderson of uh, Hawthorne is going to take the free kick. He's about 75 metres out from goal, but the umpire spotted that. So Anderson with the free kick uh, for Hawthorne, about two kicks out. Now there's plenty of potency out forward with uh, Brereton and Dunstall. He might just centre the kick and float it and hope that one of those high, high flyers can mark it. Curran is there well, is there as well. Now it's Anderson, 75 metres out, kicks the ball landing about 40 metres out from goal. And it's going to be a Geelong mark, Lindner taking a forwards mark in defence on the halfback line for the Cats. 
four and a half minutes of added time in this quarter and it's been five goals to three in this term or five goals to four in fact now Linda gets it out towards uh, Darcy Darcy's left foot kick looking for Flanagan but he's behind ball spills down towards uh, Collins good tackle by Collins on couch is not rewarded loose ball goes to Mew Mew on the wing a floating kick towards the half forward line where the mark is taken by views on the halfback flank boundary umpire right on the scene i thought he completed the mark on the wrong side but you're uh, right you're paid. right Tim. kick beyond the wing linda from behind takes a beauty for the cats and he's been one of their lifters he's just four to the wing or right on the wing really centering kick to half forward goes for ablett but uh, lost the ball in the sun that time ball hits the ground brownless goes in and fights for it mcginnis tackling and a ball up forced at center half forward for geelong we've crossed the 30 minute mark I said 11 minutes ago it was a critical phase. Well, the Hawks have won the phase with two goals to nothing. And they lead by 36 points. At the bounce, Flanagan the knock. Uh, Gary Hocking has barely touched it for Geelong. He goes in after it and gets buried again. It falls to Couch, who's tackled well by Condon. Ball taken away by Pritchard, who has a bounce, has another. Bruns gives chase, but Pritchard burns him off. Kicks towards uh, Dunstall, one out with Darcy. And Dunstall wins! 30 metres out directly in front. Had him for dinner that time. Always had the body. He reads the flight of the ball so early and had the body in such good position that Darcy was always in trouble. And Dunstall now lines up for his third at the 31 minute mark. He doesn't miss too many of these, but he has missed that one. So the excitement of the grand final, even after an hour, is still causing uncharacteristic errors. The Hawks 12-9-81 lead the Cats 7-2-44 by 37 points. The kick in for the Cats to be taken by Mark Yates. 31 and a half minutes second term. Hawthorne 81, Geelong 44. So the Cats have hardly made any ground on them at all in this term as, the, as it nearly ends. Kicked by Yates was a touch by Flanagan it was. Knocked on by a Hawthorne player on the ground towards Anderson. But the ball deflected from his body by Gary Hocking and it's half time in the grand final. Hawthorne lead by 37 points after having led by 40 points at quarter time. At half time, it's Hawthorne 12 9, 81 to Geelong 7 2, 44. Now, question number one answered Damien Burke back onto the bench. And uh, unless Flanagan really runs out of steam, I wonder if we'll see the captain back in this match. His first quarter was a disaster for him personally and uh, in terms of his uh, sporting craft. He had a shocker. Yes, and I see that, that uh, Malcolm Blight has uh, maintained uh, his confidence. Stephen Hocking is still playing on Dermy Burton down there. So uh, I think what Malcolm must have done in that case is said, well, I'm going to give you one more chance. And I'm going to stick with you. So, it is, But it's an enormous, enormous task this quarter for the Cats because they must they must pull back three goals. That's all I'd ask. From the centre bounce, and Ayers is still a loose man up on the back line for Hawthorne. Uh, from the centre bounce, uh, Dippy Domenico gets uh, the ball away. Knocked on by Anderson. The ball kicked on off the knee almost by Couch up towards uh, the half-back line where it's picked up uh, by... By Linda. By Linda. Linda kicks the ball from the centre up towards the half-forward line. There's Ayers. Kicks the ball, but it's not a bad one. Taken by Gary Hocking. Superbly tackled. That was a terrific tackle by, uh, by Tuck. Bruns goes in hard, trying to soccer the ball, picked up by Morrissey, tries to get the ball out towards Ayers, who uh, was not in position, but the loose ball picked up by Boz, kicks the ball back in towards the wing position, punched away by Tuck, Malakellis gets a push in the back and goes to the ground for a Geelong free kick. Despite the scoreboard, the Cats have kicked the opening goal in each quarter so far. Kick towards half forward to Couch, who is spoiled by Deer. Tuck takes the crumb. Kicks uh, beyond the centre for Hawthorne. From the side, Curran, who's really had a dip today. Couldn't mark. Taken by Whitman. Hand pass to Bacanara. Another one to Morrissey. Inside 50. Goes for goal, but sprays it. And misses. Almost missed everything. Scores are behind just. And the Hawks are 12 10 82. The Cats 7 2 44. 75 seconds into the second half and the Cats just cannot afford to let the rope between them and the Hawks get any longer. A kick in by Darcy uh, up the centre almost despite a plea from Flanagan who led to the pocket. Oh, terrific mark is taken by Yates at centre half back. Gets the handball away and it's taken there by Boz. Boz kicks into the centre where behind the mark has been taken in defence by Chris Mew. Mew at centre half back. Kicks the ball across that half back line towards the wing where Langford has marked, biffed him up from uh, the fullback area. Langford 
Around the wing he goes, up towards, uh, well, Buse was there, tried to punch the ball away. Yates is there, does well, fends off a oncoming Hawthorne player. Steadies, kicks the ball to Stoneham, good pass, and Stoneham's marked uh, on the wing. Now, Brownless leads into centre-half forward. He'll go for Ablett, who's in front, but the ball beats the wall. Spills behind, no one staying down. Ayres is there, gets out of a Scott tackle. Kicks the ball right across the full-back line, out of the full, and it's going to be a Geelong free kick to be taken by, I'd say, David Cameron, about 35 metres out from goal. Right forward pocket, main scoreboard end, about 35 metres out, and he'll kick from right on the boundary line. The goal umpire right back. Have a perfect view of the oncoming ball. Hawthorne, 82, Geelong, 44. So see if the Cats can score the first goal in the third term and try and claw their way back. He's taking plenty of time. Now Cameron, drop punt, it's on its way, and it's, it never looked likely from the time it left the boot, and it's through four behind. Hawthorne, 12-10, Geelong advanced to seven goals, three. Gary Ayres, who made that bad error a moment ago. Just seemed to relax as he kicked, and now he kicks badly as he goes for a short pass and falls over, but it finds Condon on the half-back flank. Lovely sweeping hand pass inside to the running Langford, who hasn't been chased by Ablett up the ground. He kicks badly though with the left boot, and Boss takes the mark. Behind the wing for Geelong, he's looking for a runner for the hand pass. None there, but uh, he can play on because there's no one on the mark, and there's a 50-metre penalty though against Dippier Domenico apparently, so uh, the Hawks being dragged right back, and Boss comes up to centre half forward virtually. The man on the mark is at 55 metres from goal. So another scoring chance. Lead from Ablett. And it's marked, in fact, by, ooh, by Flanagan in front. He gets uh, pushed in the back by Langford after marking. Langford was bearing down and couldn't stop. And the umpire read it that way and pays no 50 metres. Flanagan certainly copped it late. And the replay on the scoreboard reveals that well and truly. But no 50. Flanagan from 45 has a shot. The Cats need it desperately. They need a start in this quarter. It's close. It hit the top of the post. So agonisingly close for the Cats. And they go to 7-4-46. Hawthorne 12-10-82. And the difference is 36 points, four minutes in. Kick by air. So go to the, uh, the uh, practice pitch area. And Langford leading onto the ball can't mark. Couch is out number two to one. So Langford wins the ball, but doesn't kick it with any great precision. Coming through his views, tries to barge his way through, but it's hard to do. An excellent tackle there by Condon, and there's going to be a free kick to Hawthorne between centre and uh, half-back flank to be taken by Whitman. Now Chris Whitman, half-back flank for Hawthorne. Drop punt up towards the 50-metre line. Linda is there. Curran goes to spoil. The ball sp uh, spills down. Let's see who's going to emerge with it. No one can for the moment, although eventually uh, Geelong do through Linda from the half-back line. An awkward bounce to the outer side wing. It favours Chris Mew. Mew kicks the ball back in towards the point of the square where it's been marked by Pritchard. Best on the ground almost till half-time. Pritchard's foot pass finds Condon. Condon pumps a hand pass to centre half forward at Kennedy, who's under a lot of trouble. Boz comes out. Kicks the ball, a scrubbing kick, and it might be effective. A chance here for Bairstow. He's on the half-back line, goes for a run. Has one bounce, runs his full share. Spears the pass in towards the lead from Ablett. Condon does well, but he's given away a free kick. He did as well as he could. And there's going to be a free kick to Ablett. Now it's going to Condon. It's going the other way. Well, Colin. Collins, rather. Collins has got it on the half-back line. Oh, and, shocking uh, kick into see. play. It was marked by Brownless, but the umpire says he's got to come back and kick over the mark. And Pritchard's hurt himself too. Might have pulled it. Hurt his ankle before. So uh, Collins has got the free kick in the back pocket. Pritchard in trouble. Platten off the ground. Kicks up towards Burrett and punched away by Stephen Hocking. At the, uh, oh, the front of the pack is Bairstow. He could have made better use of that ball. He... Just uh, work the ball towards the boundary line for a boundary throw-in. Hawthorne, 82, Geelong, 46. Six minutes in. Still the margin, six goals. Flanagan in front gets the knock for Geelong. Cameron knocks it on to Gary Hocking, who takes it cleanly and centres. Sets it up for the forwards. Ablett front position. Marks! Has been paid the mark. Lost it on the way down, but good enough for the umpire. And he's 45 metres out directly in front and can go for his fifth. Four out of seven to the champion in the first half for Geelong. And now this, at the six and a half minute mark of the third quarter, to signify that Geelong might mount some sort of a comeback in the second half of the grand final. Here he comes. They need this desperately. Third set shot in the first seven minutes, and this one is home. He puts it right through the middle. 
and the Cats are 8-4, 52. Hawthorne 12, 10, 82, the difference 30 points. And for the third quarter in a row, the Cats kicked the first goal. Yeah, and a great effort by Ablett. Um, it's so difficult with that, the way that ball was hanging up in the air, and he was in the front. He had nobody to sit on their back. He had to go for the ball, and with the pack coming from behind, but showed great uh, character, great strength and uh, of commitment to take that ball and kick the goal. I like the fact that uh, in this quarter, it's really taken six minutes to get a goal, and the first goal is coming to the, to the Cats. It's meant that Hawthorne hasn't gone on and dominated the game, and really, if the Cats can just claw back four goals this quarter, that's all they need to aim for. From the centre bounce, knocked down by Flanagan, who'll emerge with the ball. It's the Brownlow medalist, Couch, kicks towards half four. There's the Bushman Ayres, dropped the sitter, coming in using the body well was Ablett. Scott is there, knocked on by Ablett out towards Hamilton. They're under siege, Hawthorne, at the moment. Scott comes through, tries to work the ball towards towards the boundary line, gets the handball, but it's intercepted by Hawthorne's heirs, who makes the mistake and redeems himself with a clearing left foot kick from the half-back line, up towards the wing, a chance for Morrissey. Linda comes in, touches the ball away from uh, Morrissey, does well. They've got four on one here, Gary Hocking, that's uh, Geelong. Gary Hocking picks up the ball, gets onto his left boot, kicks him towards centre-half forward, and the mark is taken, not paid to Malakalis. The ball spills to Bairstow, Geelong looking OK. Long hand pass by Bairstow, out wide towards Buse. Buse has got a couple of options, goes long. His option will be Ablett, or he's interfered from behind, but there's no free kick. Should have been almost against Ablett. Kick off the ground by Langford up towards centre half back. The fluky bounce is not good for Bacchanara, and it's not good for Hyde. This going to be a free kick to Geelong. 40 metres out directly in front, a high tackle, and it'll be taken by Mark Bairstow. A fluky bounce eluded Bacchanara and Stoneham, who really has not been in the game for the Cats today. Smooth, I think. A very telling part of the last three or four minutes has been the Hawthorne defensive errors. And even though it's looked to us as though they're in the ascendancy in their own minds, I don't believe they feel they've got this match by the scruff of the neck. Mark Bairstow, 40 metres out directly in front. The difference is 30 points. It'll make it 24. Drop, punch for goal. He's put it through. So the Cats get the first two goals of the third quarter. And we've just got a message from Greg Miles at uh, Mooney Valley. At half time, the bookmakers were betting 20 to 1 on Hawthorne and 6 to 1 against the Cats. So maybe a few Cat supporters may have taken the 6 to 1. Thanks, Greg. And a vital thing, of course, happened there. I think we should keep our eyes on uh, Darren Pritchard to see how, how bad that injury is because if. Uh, he doesn't go on with it, and the loss of Platt, and that will be quite critical the further this game goes. The Cats within 24 points. Bacchanara had it in the centre and lost it, and Linda takes it away. Runs into a wall of Hawks, though, and has nowhere to go. There's a stack up, and umpire Carey comes in and will ball it up just outside the centre circle. Ten minutes into the third quarter. And I reckon the most telling ten minutes, the most decisive for the Cats in the match so far. Deer the knock straight to Tuck. His kick ricochets off a teammate though and goes nowhere. Bairstow falls over the ball and umpire Sheehan comes in and will bounce it again. Four goal margin. The Cats are back in touch. At half time they just about lost touch when Hawthorne kicked those two goals in time on in the second quarter. We've got a ball game again. Flanagan gets the knock against Deer to Malakellis. Kick to half forward. Stoneham is uh, against two. It falls to Hamilton. A hand pass out wide to Couch. The Brownlow medalist long with the left boot. Brownless and Ablett. Brownless has got it. Brownless on the behind post has marked it. A great surging mark from behind. Ablett flew early, tried to take the screamer. Was down by the time the ball arrived. Brownless timed his leap well and was up there and took it on his chest. He's against the behind post in the left forward pocket. He might run around, cut the angle. He does. He shoots. He has just scored a behind. He almost missed that. Put it right across the face. But the Cats are surging. Hawthorne 12, 10, 82. Geelong 9, 5, 59. That's the closest they've been for a long, long time. 11 minutes in the third term, 23 degrees. A magnificent day in Melbourne. Short kick in by Ayres is OK as he finds Langford. Langford plays on quickly. Kicks out towards the wing on the outer side. Good use of the body by Whitman to get views underneath the ball. But the Cats have the uh, the players at the at the face at the workbench. Picked up by views. Gets it out towards Gary Hocking. Tried to chop his way through. He might be penalised. No, the loose ball is free. It comes out towards Buse again. Pumps the hand pass out to Gary Hocking. We really have got a ball game now. Hocking gets it out towards Couch. Couch now on the practice pitch area. Kicks in towards the 50-metre line. 
There is Stoneham. Stoneham running the wrong way. Looking for Malakella. Sees it centre half forward. Dippy Domenico coming late, but not in time. Malakella marks, plays on, kicks the ball to Scott, and Scott's mark 30 metres out from goal. Lindner's doing a power of work behind play. This game has swung 180 degrees in 12 minutes. Alan Jeans, I can see him to our right, the Hawthorne coach at Furrowed Brow. Now he's 35 metres out, maybe a little less. Robert Scott has not been a dominant or significant player in this, get, in this match so far. Drop punts for goal and has missed it. He's pushed it to the right. So Geelong go to within, or get to within 22 points. Hawthorne 12, 10, 82. Geelong 9, 6, 60. An extraordinary phase as the Cats are coming back. That should have been a goal and they would have had their tails right up. Lovely kick from Muir as Langford ran down the middle of the ground and Ablett didn't go with him. And Langford marks between half back and centre. Great teaming by the, defense, the uh, veteran tandem. As Langford kicks long, lovely searching kick to half forward. Curran and Brerett, neither could mark. Who can run onto the ball? Stephen Hocking, hand pass to Buse, who backs his pace, doesn't win. Has to hand pass defensively. Pritchard, a long kick at a fly ball. Up to the forward pocket. Dunstall first there but can't uh, get to the ball before it's over the boundary line for a throw-in in Hawthorne's right forward pocket. And now Hawthorne needing the goal to settle. They lead 82 to 60, 13 minutes third quarter. Boundary throw-in, 25 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Right forward pocket, punt road goal. There's the boundary throw-in. There is Boss and also Karen. Karen wins, but straight to Bruns. Bruns' kick is a touch play on the call. Picked up by Bacanara. Bacanara kicks back towards the goal area where it's offline and through for a behind to Hawthorne. Geelong a 9-6-60 and Hawthorne 12-11-83. 13 and three quarter minutes as Darcy prepares to put it back into play. Looks thoughtfully at either flank. Had a look down the middle too and then gets a lead from Hamilton into the back pocket. No one chasing uh, the 19-year-old who plays on and has a bounce and then kicks along the members' half-back flank. Gary Hocking behind Kennedy almost marked but Bruns onto the ball but fumbled it. Got to get it at the first ground. Picked up by Morris oh, and Dippy Domenico has knocked Gary Hocking with an elbow to the pace and is being reported. He came into Shepherd. He didn't just put the flat arm out. He swung the arm with the elbow pointed and got him right in the face. And Gary Hocking is still down, being attended to by three trainers. And umpire Sheehan is putting the notebook away after making the necessary insertion. Oh, the dipper. That's a bad one. Free kick to Gary Hocking, just behind the members' wing. And when he gets his bearings, he'll put Geelong back into attack and he's got a face full of claret right in the mouth. And the fellow with the uh, frizzy hair has just taken his time before he kicks the ball. Umpire Sheehan now pockets the book. Hocking puts down the ball. Just adjusts well, his socks. Blood and he's streaming from his mouth, mouth, as you said, Tim. That was a bad one. He kicks to the wing and uh, goes... Oh, he's kicked it out of bounds on the ball. So it's a free kick to Hawthorne, and that was an unfortunate incident in every way. Hawthorne by 23 points, and uh, it'll be Greg Deere to take the free kick on the halfback line. 15 minutes in the third term. Hawthorne 12 11, Geelong 9 goal 6. Kick by Deere towards Brereton, who's behind an outmarks boss who is in front. Brereton now reveling in this. Drop punt in towards half forward. Hawthorne player is down at centre half forward. He's getting him up now. Picked up by Anderson. Kicks in towards goal and a terrific goal. Kicked by Dean Anderson from the left forward pocket. Morris, he's hurt himself. He's uh, holding his left knee. But the more importantly, some good work by Brereton and also Anderson. And Anderson capped it off with a goal. What's and happened Flanagan's to run up the ground a dipper and uh, chested him and given him a bit of a shove. And it's danger time for Geelong. They were getting back into this game. They can't afford to let that worry them, Stan. No, you're right. But again, I just can't help but, uh, but come back to just think about the skills of this game. Robert Scott's missed a set shot, and Dean Anderson swung his foot, foot to, foot to the, a left foot to the ball, and he's kicked the goal from an impossible angle. Out of the centre, Bacanara had possession. Best, a reckless tackle, gives away a free. It spills to Dippy and Domenico, and the umpire says play on. Hand pass to Condon, kick towards Curran and Dunstall, who are leading out to the outer flank, but it beats them over the line for a throw-in. Up towards the forward pocket, only about 30 metres around from the behind post. With the Hawks deep in attack again and rallying after Geelong kicked a couple of early goals and really threatened. Hawthorne 13-11-89, Geelong 9-6-60. Hawthorne by 29 points in their forward flank. 
That's Hawthorne, picked up by Brereton, the kicks into a player, Malakellis, picked up by Caron. A left foot kick by Caron in towards goal and has put it through. Two very good goals by Hawthorne in the danger period. The red flag was up, it was danger, but they've come through again. Hawthorne, 14 11 95, Geelong, 9 6 60, and they lead by 35 points. Yes, and uh, just <laughs> incredible, isn't it? I mean, uh, how often do we see it with this Hawthorne side? Peter Curran's third goal, and, and uh, when the, the Cats have really had done extremely well for 15 minutes of this quarter, and it's all blown in about a 30-second little burst. Hawks by 35 points. At the centre bounce, Bacanara again with the ball. He's tackled but gets a hand pass to Pritchard, who storms out of the centre. And now the Cats under siege again from 60 metres out. Long kick to full forward. is offline and through for a behind. Hawthorne by 36 points, so the status quo just about restored. And we're 17 and a half minutes into the third term, and the Cats' early attack, their assault on Hawthorne has amounted to nothing. Pritchard's fourth behind in the game. Now Darcy, with uh, the sun in his eyes, searching for someone. Linda leads up towards centre-half back. That'll be his target. Bruce Linda, the chance here. Oh, he's out of position, but does well from behind. Gets the handball to the running Bairstow. On the attacking side of the centre, the lead from Brownless. Just terrific, almost took his head off. That knocked him backwards as he was running out forwards. And uh, there was so much pace on that, uh, that kick from Bairstow. Brown was 55 metres out, directly in front. Goes for the drop punt, there's plenty on it. And it is a delightful goal kicked by Billy Brownless. That's his second. And Hawthorne can't quite shake them off. But as I said uh, very early in the game, after Hawthorne got that good lead of three or four goals early, the Cats are playing catch-up football. Tom Hafey, Hawthorne 14-12, Geelong 10-6. Well, Bruce Lindner started that, of course, because he really uh, got a beautiful hand pass out to Bairstow, and it was a delightful pass. Brownless does look a bit dangerous from time to time, and now Scotty McGuinness has been miles behind in each lead that uh, Brownless has actually made. He's only kicked the two goals, but I still regard him as a bit of a danger to them. Still a 30-point lead. The Cats have such uh, rapid scoring power that uh, it's not too great a margin. At the bounce, Deer beats Flanagan with a decisive thump, but Yates has the ball covered. Loses it. Hawthorne Guernsey's everywhere, but the Cats come away with it through Couch. He runs into a Bacchanara tackle, gets a 20-metre kick, but uh, Collins clears for Hawthorne. Or an easy mark missed by Buse on the centre line. Flanagan goes into assist, sweeps a wide hand pass, but straight to Ayers, who from the wing belts Hawthorne into attack. Up to the half-forward line, Dunstall for Front position marks on his chest and is within scoring range. Pushed to the ground after taking the mark and 50 metres, 50 metres against Darcy will bring the man on the mark to the goal line. So a ridiculous defensive error and Dunstall now will kick from point blank range and could barely miss for his third goal. So it is... A terrific battle at the moment, with Geelong desperately trying to cut into this lead, but each time they do, Hawthorne rallying and reversing it at the other end. And now Dunstall, not taking much of a run-up, he lines them up from the edge of the square and comes in and prods it through for a goal. His third of the grand final, and the Hawks top the 100 and lead again by 36 points at the 20-minute mark. 15-12-102 to Geelong, 10-6-66. And already here we are at the 20-minute mark of the third quarter, and I'm going to say that if Geelong gets beaten by anything less than five goals today, they oh can boy. just count uh, their stupid, unforced, ridiculous errors. I mean, it really has been a blot on their game to come this far, and I know they're not playing well, but by Jingo's way, the silly things that they've done today is illustrated again by that another 50-metre. I mean, perhaps Dunstall might have kicked the goal, but it would have been a heck of a lot harder further out. Hawthorne by 36 points. Umpire Brian Sheehan to restart play after that Dunstall goal and the 50-metre penalty against Darcy. From the centre bounce and Flanagan wins. First possession out of the centre, knocked on by Flanagan. Swarm of uh, Geelong jumpers there. Malakellis gets the handball out towards uh, David Cameron. 45 metres out from goal. Pumps towards goal and has put it through. <laughs> Terrific work by Flanagan in the engine room in the centre there to get it out. Geelong moved to... 11-6. Scoreboard just a little uh, late. 11 6 72 to Hawthorne. 16-12, 108. Crackers. Well, if they can get back in, they've got to get the next goal. And this is very cu crucial for this game. But uh, a lovely bit of play by the, by uh, uh, Cameron then. He just balanced up and drove the ball through. But a good bit of play by Geelong getting the ball out of the centre. But it's very next five minutes. 
Scoreboard attendance uh, having trouble at the moment. It's 72 to 102. 30 points the difference. Now the Hawks with numbers force it about 30 metres out of the centre. The Cats trying to stand up to the onslaught and eventually they force a ball up. Oh, terrific stuff as Hawthorne just threw numbers and weight bodies everywhere to try and force that ball forward and then win a clear kick. And the Cats stood in their path and it took 30 metres before they stopped them. At the bounce, Deer climbs high for Hawthorne and gets a 20 metre knock. Oh, bad bounce for Linda, lets Bacanara in, but his hand pass is bad. Taken by Bairstow, hooks it along the half-back flank where Dippy and Amenico takes a good mark and gets roundly hooted for something that wasn't terribly attractive earlier. Kicks to full forward. No one can mark. Morrissey the chance. Beats off a couple of would-be tacklers. Swings the ball at goal and puts it through. And a Geelong player is down and hurt. It's Darcy, who Tom Hafey said is as tough as old boots, but he is very badly hurt at the moment. Morrissey the goal kicker. And again, the Hawks lead by 36 points at the 22 and a half minute mark. Well, that was quite incredible. I guess there's an illustration of why uh, at Hawthorne they nicknamed Jamie Morrissey the freak because he picked that ball up and he had nowhere to go. He did a little, what I'd call, a little evening two-step or evening three-step, just um, um, and all of a sudden found space, dropped the ball on his boot and kicked the goal. A remarkable goal. Hawthorne by 36 points. Centre bounce again, one by Flanagan. He'll get the first possession. Good work there by Kennedy of Hawthorne to knock the ball with his body across the half-back line. Scott overran the ball, forced into an error on Collins, and Collins will take a free kick from being dragged behind by Scott on the point of the square at centre half back. Now Collins drop punt looking for Dippy Domenico. He's got the front position and a terrific one-hander in front of Neville Bruns. And Bruns who really has lowered his colours today to the Big Dipper who had a sensational first term with eight kicks. He's lost his left boot but he'll kick with his right so it won't matter and he'll go short to uh, Chris Mew who drifts down from centre half back. Mew marks, kicks in towards centre half forward and Karen takes a very athletic mark. It wasn't a... Uh, a normal Chris Mew kick, it was, uh, it was a difficult ball to mark and Karen had two grabs at it but he had it perfectly in control both times and is marked from 40 metres out. Stoneham going into defence for Geelong, I think for the injured Darcy. And Madigan coming on and Ayres coming off. So it'll be Peter Karen, who's kicked three goals straight. Ablett's kicked five straight for uh, Geelong from 35 metres out, directly in front, punt road goal. Oh, he's made a mess of it, I'd say. It may come back, no, not enough. And through for a behind to Peter Curran. And a little sigh of relief there from uh, Geelong as Darcy comes off and Schultz comes back on. 24 minutes third term, Hawthorne 16-13, Geelong 11-6. Exactly the same margin as it was at half time. 37 points, lovely kick in by Stone and well marked by Lindner. Hand pass to Couch, long kick towards Ablett lurking at half forward. He can't mark, good spoil by Langford. On the ground Mew, as usual, with a bit of time to spare. Hooks it back beyond the centre. Out comes Curran, awkward bounce. He can't take it cleanly. Win won by Malakellis for Geelong. The hand pass went nowhere. Hughes deflects it to Kennedy. Hand pass wide to Bacanara. 30 metres out. Open goal and drives it through. The Hawks stretch the lead to 43 points. Bacanara's third goal. We're about to enter time on in the third quarter and Hawthorne leading by as much as it has at any time in the match. Yes, and I think that a uh, person who... Uh can really have a big hand in this quarter as a per, uh, as Chris Mew. I think that his game has just gone along. He's just rolling on, getting better and better. I mean, you look at Chris Mew, he doesn't seem to have much pace. He's not a high fly mark, but he's terribly, terribly honest. And his performance in trapping that ball then and getting it down where Buckenauer, I think, was a little bit lucky. He was hanging out, uh, in actual fact, hanging back, waiting for an easy kick, but he's got the score on the board. Hawthorne by 43 points, centre bounce and one by Deer. He'll get the first clean possession. Gary Hocking through the pack, kick off the ground by Hawthorne. It could have been Anderson. Comes up towards Karen. Karen's on 50. Hand passes to Bacanara. Foot pass on the bounce towards Dunstall. Plays cat and mouse with his opponent. Screws the ball back in towards goal. And Stephen Hocking in front of Brereton has taken the mark. Tommy, you wanted to say something after that last goal? I'm uh, just saying how unselfish Hawthorne are. Uh, John Kennedy could have had a run in shot at goal, but instead he just puts it to the better player or player in position. And that's typical of the way they play. Right. Schultz kicks the ball up towards the wing. Stoneham gets a push in the back. How many possessions uh, for Stoneham, Jack? He's on the defensive side of the centre. He's had seven possessions. Now, Flanagan is by himself, but he uh, ignores him and kicks up towards the uh, 
the practice pitch area where Ablett launched himself but didn't do much when it, uh, the ball fell in front towards Madigan who gets his first possession. The ball punched uh, behind by Geelong as Hawthorne go forward. Linda going nowhere, looking for a hand pass. Luckily one goes out towards Buse. Buse now on the attacking side of the centre. Comes in towards full forward. Up goes Ablett and takes a terrific mark. 40 metres out directly in front. He's kicked five goals straight, uh, Gary Ablett. Now, one and a half minutes of added time in the third quarter, and Hawthorne leading 115 to 72, and uh, probably another three or four minutes remaining in this term. So if the Cats can get a couple, they might be within range, but it's been catch-up all day. Ablett five straight. Hawthorne by 43. They led by 40 at quarter and by 37 at half-time. Ablett coming in, drop punts for goal, and it is another perfect Gary Ablett kick. Six straight to Gary Ablett. Geelong 12, 6, 78. Hawthorne 17, 13, 115 after two minutes of added time in the third quarter. Well, what can you say about the man? I mean, we, he really is quite a mercurial player and uh, his, uh, his ability to launch himself there, I felt uh, for John Kenny who was in front, he got an unbelievable thrust out with Ablett's uh, right boot. But Ablett, he just got, they've got to give him more support, more assistance up there. And Scott and players like that have got to get underneath him and crumb more. 37 points, Hawthorne's lead. Flanagan cleverly wins the ball out of the centre. Kicks long towards Brownless, one out. Can't mark. It falls towards Ablett. He's got a chance, but he's taking it the wrong way. He trips. Taken away from him by Collins. Good stuff by the young defender, who chips a pass beyond half-back, and Bacanara takes the mark. Moment of peril for the Hawks. But even Ablett couldn't rise to the occasion then. Bacanara short kick to Deer, who takes the mark just behind the centre line. Ayres as often has gone to the dressing rooms for Hawthorne, so uh, they have two badly injured players. Kick by Deer to half forward, beats the pack. Boss gets to it just inside the boundary line, but can't keep it in. Takes it over for a throw in on Hawthorne's left half forward flank. 28 minutes into the term, Hawthorne by 37 points, and uh, Skeeter has the feeling that Mark Boss is feeling the heat. From the boundary throw in, Hawthorne into attack with Malakellis now at centre half back. A high hand pass to Lindner, who does well with good support from Stephen Hocking to get Debbie Domenico away. The kick by that player up towards the half forward line to uh, Stoneham, and it hasn't been uh, Stoneham's day today. And there'll be a boundary throw in between wing and half forward. The Cats into attack, but they looked likely before with two on two as that ball went forward. But Gary Ablett tripped at the crucial moment. Boundary throw in, Dio over the top of Flanagan and gives away a free kick. Infringes. He's been tireless today, Greg Deere. The kick by Flanagan to half forward. Oh, not a real target there. Brownless was leading, but he was never in the hunt. And Tucker's marked at centre half back. Kicks across the half back line to Langford. Gary Ablett claims him as he was late on the scene. Still grabbing onto him and won't want to hold him for much longer without giving away a 50. Now, Langford from half back flank. Condon's made space up towards the half forward line. Punched away by Couch. Comes down towards uh, Cameron. But the ball rebounds towards Condon. Condon's kick to Anderson. Anderson of Hawthorne, open goal, 35 metres out, and has put it right through the middle for a beauty right on three-quarter time. Four and a half minutes of added time. Anderson gets his third. Hawthorne advanced to 18-13-121 to Geelong 12-6-78. Yes, and that third goal came pure and simply because there's a Jong player out there showed a total lack of commitment. I mean, uh, when, the, when he had to stand his ground and he didn't, and the, and the Hawthorne players were able to grab the ball, swing it away and came back to Anderson. I mean, that was a, a deplorable, and I put that down as another ridiculous error by the Cats have just let Hawthorne skip away further. Over the 30-minute mark, the Hawks have stretched the lead to 43 points. Bacanara out of the centre gets a kick straight across ground. It's collected by Bruns for Geelong, who kicks towards Stoneham at half forward. Went with one hand, and Mew just took the ball away from him with ease. Kicks back to the centre, but Bruns takes the mark for Geelong and can pump them forward again. They need a couple of goals in the last minute or so. He gives it off to uh, Boss, who kicks to half forward. Brownless almost took a mark. Ball kicked by uh, Ablett back towards goal. Off direction and through for a behind. Desperate. Desperate snap by Ablett from off balance, and he very nearly kicked his seventh. It's 121 to 79, and the Hawks lead by 42 points, approaching the 31 minute mark. A kick in by John Kennedy is a short one, gains about 25 metres to Condon, had to shield the sun. He slips over as he plays on, in trouble, and just kicks the ball fairly feebly towards the boundary line, but it's still 50 metres away from the danger area where it's gone over for a boundary throw in. Hawthorne 18 13, Geelong 12 7. Football on three lower network stations, 31 minutes in the third term 
of the 89 grand final. Boundary throw in the two 14s, and it's Deer, 14 of Hawthorne who wins. Comes down towards Madigan. Daw does it well with nonchalance. Kicks the ball after a bounce up towards half forward. Brereton is there with the eights. Brereton front position, good hip and shoulder. Brereton wins. Kicks the ball in towards the forward pocket to Dunstall on the bounce. It beats Dunstall and Schultz. The ball spills behind to Stephen Hocking, who looks for Bruns on the half back line. It's a bad kick, too close to the boundary line. Perhaps he was uh, playing percentage and going close to the line and thinking, well, Bruns might just be dipper at ground level. But it gave Bruns very little chance of keeping the ball in play, and it's over for a throw in. Hawthorne's left half forward flank. Siren to go at any second. Hawks deep in attack. At the uh, throw in, Morrissey takes the ball, gets a hand pass towards Anderson, who could get his fourth, loses the run of it. Stephen Hocking goes in after it, gets it for Geelong. Hand pass to Linder as he was tackled. Linder a low kick towards Bruns, who drops an easy mark at half back, but cleans up and then kicks low to the centre. A run for the big man Flanagan. Deer pursuing him. Flanagan first there, has time to have a good look. Sees uh, Brownless leading. A low scrubbing kick. Brownless overruns it. Now Ablett surging down the ground, trying to run onto it. Langford held him. No free kick. And the ball over the boundary line for a throw in. Geelong's half forward flank, 32 and a half minutes, third quarter. Have the Cats time for a score. Should have been a free kick to Gary Ablett. Grab without the ball. Boundary throw in, 45 metres away from goal. Up they go. Both Ruckman virtually miss it. Knocked on by Stoneham. It gains metreage for uh, Geelong, but the ball is over. And this time about 25 metres out from goal. There'll be a boundary throw in in the dying moments of this third quarter. Hawthorne, 18-13. Geelong, 12-7. Boundary throw in again. Flanagan in front. Knocks the ball down. Who to? Picked up by Hamilton. By Hamilton. Kicks in towards goal. It's bouncing and has trickled over. It's a goal. Well on three quarter time. And there goes the siren. A goal to Hamilton. On his left boot, a rolling ball. And it, uh, it just beat the pack and threw for a goal at the three quarter time mark. That quarter going 33 minutes and two seconds. At three-quarter time in the grand final, it's Hawthorne 18-13-121 to Geelong 13-7-85. And that's uh, a lead of 36 points. And in an extraordinary quarter, the Cats kicked six goals, five to Hawthorne, six, four. So 12 goals kicked, but uh, at the end of it, almost status quo. The Cats only made up one point of the 37-point halftime margin. The goal kick is for Hawthorne, three to Curran, Brereton, Dunstall, Bacanara and Anderson. Good even performance. And the singles to Dippier Domenico, Whitman and Morrissey. And for Geelong, Applets kick six, Brownless two, and singles to Bairstow, Stoneham, Bews and Cameron. At three-quarter time, Hawthorne 18-13, 1-21, Geelong 13-7-85, a lead of 36 points after they led by 37 points at the halfway mark. A little like 84 this when Hawthorne broke away in the first quarter. Essendon clung on for the next two and then came at them in the last. But this time the margin is six goals instead of four at the start of the last quarter of the season. And Hawthorne are first into attack through Bacanara. Spoiled from Hocking against uh, Curran. At the base of the pack is Gary Hocking. And uh, Stephen there with him as well, but neither can collect the ball cleanly. An umpire Sheehan will bounce it on Hawthorne's attacking end of the centre square. So about uh, 35 metres forward of the centre for the Hawks, up towards half forward. Hawthorne 121, Geelong 85. From that ball up, the ball knocked down. Tuck applies a tackle. The ball comes out towards Malakulis. He took his eye off the ball. Oncoming player was uh, Bacanara. Hand ball onto Anderson. Anderson goes to Dunstall and is marked 45 metres out on an angle. Right forward pocket or half forward flank to the main uh, scoreboard end. But Malakulis just lifted his head to see who was oncoming. It was Bacanara who won the ball onto Anderson, his foot pass found Dunstall. The difference, seventh mark to Dunstall, kicks, cross goal to the far pocket, Curran flew high, no one can mark, off fingers and a boundary throw in. 68 seconds of play in the final term of the grand final, Hawthorne 121, Geelong 85. Hawks deep in attack and a goal might put it beyond Geelong's reach. Curran a beautiful knock to the back, a flying shot by Whitman is not marked by Dunstall on the goal line. He might have had it but it was just punched away from him at the last minute. Taken by Buse, lovely or long sweeping hand pass to Linda. He gives a hand pass straight to Kennedy. Kennedy gives it to Anderson who's inside 50, lines up for his fourth but misses. And so still the Hawks a bit jittery. I don't believe they think they're home yet. 
They're 18, 14, 122 to Geelong, 13, 7, 85. The difference, 37 points, 100 seconds into the last quarter. Kick in by Yates with a bandage just above his right knee. He's gone short to Gary Hocking on the half-back line. Hocking's left foot kick looking for Flanagan, and Flanagan lost sight of it for a moment, but changed direction and eventually took the mark, probably the sun in his eyes. Flanagan on the half-back flank, kicks up towards the wing where Stoneham is marked in front of Chris Mew. Not a big influence on the game so far. Stoneham on the defensive side of wing, kicks up towards uh, half-forward. Hawthorne seemed to have the numbers, no mark paid. Madigan is there, and so is Couch. The umpire has spotted a free that's going to Couch. It's going Geelong's way. He's about 60 metres out from goal. Now, Ablett's dropping back with Brownless. They might need a crummer. It'll be David Cameron if required, but he must go long. He does. To give Ablett a chance to mark. He flies high, but in front or to the side is Langford, who outmarked him or really outjudged him, really. And Langford takes the mark at fullback. Tired looking kick from Couch. The Cats have played uh, three and three quarter tough finals. And it's a hot day. Bad kick from Langford, and it's marked by Bairstow at the 50 metre line. To goal, he'd have to kick at 60 metres. He ignores a lead. He goes for distance, unloads a big one to full forward, where the target is Ablett. Langford has him covered well. And off their hands, it goes through for a behind. Geelong need goals. We're three minutes into the last quarter, and the Cats 86. Trail the Hawks 122 by 36 points. Yates off, and Darcy back on. Now, Langford at the punt road goal, searching for a target. Deer gives him one as he leads across the ground. But it comes towards the northern side. The uh, broadcast side as Madigan got up high, spectacularly. Handball out of the pack uh, from uh, Bella Kellis goes to Buse, who fires towards goal, but he's offline and has put it through for a behind to Geelong. Three and a half minutes final term. Hawthorne, 18-14, 1-22, Geelong, 13-9-87. 35 points the difference. String of behinds. One to the Hawks, two to the Cats. The Hawks had one other shot which missed everything. And now Langford looks into the sun and shields his eyes. Decides where he's going and goes almost down the middle, just to the members' side thereof. Plenty up, no one able to mark. All Hawthorne as the ball comes to the boundary line side of the pack. Madigan palms it to Collins, who just gets a kick before being uh, unloaded. Towards the wing, taken by Morrissey. Great stuff as he burns off Boss. Kicks towards Brereton at half four, dives after the ball and spills it when he looked as though he had it. Taken by Darcy, who tried to do too much and was tackled ruthlessly. Picked up by Brereton, hand pass to the dipper. Intercepted by Darcy, who atones for his error and forces the ball over the line for a throw-in. It's still a great contest. The ball up towards Hawthorne's half-forward flank, right in front of the members. Hawthorne by 35 points. They led by 40 at quarter time, so there's been little in the game since then, but the initial break to the Hawks. Boundary throw, and as Brereton tried to take it himself, couldn't do so. Picked up by Stephen Hocking. Handball to Malakellis from the half-back line, kicks in towards the uh, centre, where it's been marked by Flanagan. He's anxious to play on. Coming out is Scott, but Dablett will be there using his body. Almost had a chance to mark. He's got the ball on 50 in front of Kennedy. He should hand pass across to Scott. Bruns is open for a hand pass. He does accept the hand pass. Bruns, 25 metres out, has put it through for a goal. He's kicked it. Geelong's 14th. Kicked by Neville Bruns. Hawthorne, 18-14-122. Geelong, 14-9-93. And that's continued the trend of the first goal of the quarter again to the Cats. So what we've got to do now is that they've got to uh, break the trend that's happened where the Hawks come back over them. But they've uh, given them their dues. Um, they're fighting it out uh, to, the, uh, to the utmost. And there's no doubt that Flanagan really has just been a tremendous contributor for them all day. Fantastic tension still in the air here. The Hawks lead by 29 points, but the Cats aren't letting this go without a struggle. Flanagan beats Deer and gets it down to Buse, who can't get a kick. It's taken by Whitman, who kicks Hawthorne forward. And Morrissey, who's got better as the game wears on, takes a hand pass to Pritchard. Short kick to Bacanara. Lines them up from 45 out and puts it through. And yet again, the Hawks have been thrown the challenge and they have responded with class and determination. And Bacanara it is who kicks his fourth goal. And Hawthorne 19-14-128 leads Geelong 14-9-93. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's it. They've just got the answers all the time, haven't they? You mentioned Jamie Morrissey. Uh, he hasn't had much of a run on the ball, but what he's done has been all class. Uh, he just makes something out of nothing. A, a wonderful performance there. One-handed uh, mark. Had the presence of mind to feed the handball out. And Bacanara, he has the uh, the uncanny knack of being on the end of all those. From the centre bounce, it. knocked down by Flanagan, taken away by Linda, gets it on towards uh, Scott. Scott goes long in towards goal, but it's offline. In fact, oh, colliding with the behind post is McGuinness. 
and uh, he has almost KO'd himself. There is some padding there, which probably saved him from much more serious injury. It's taken the wind out of his sails, but to his credit, he's up, although he did look for the safety of the boundary line rail there just to support himself for a moment, and uh, he may not be able to uh, take the kick. The doctor's going down to have a look at him, but he really hit that behind post with tremendous force, and luckily it's, uh, it's taped and bound to about uh, six feet up. Kick by McGuinness from the back pocket. Doesn't travel too far. Up goes Buys. One grab and the second. And the second grab was a lucky one because he turned his back on it and the ball just happened to fall in his fingertips. Now he's 55 metres out from goal. Hawthorne 128, Geelong 93. Andrew Buys. 52 metres out, drop punts for goal, it's on its way, it'll land five metres short, up goes Abler, can't mark, a chance for Hamilton, but he can't make use of it, it comes off his left boot, and it's gone through for Geelong behind. 14-10, 94 Geelong, Hawthorne, 19-14-128. That's a difference of 34 points, almost eight minutes into the quarter, so the Cats have just over 20 to try and get back, and they need six goals in that time, their legs must be feeling heavy. Langford puts the ball back into play, with the sit, Collins from behind. Couldn't take the mark. At the back, Bairstow. Swings the ball along the half-forward flank for Geelong. Cat, Cats have man in front, and it's Malik Ellis who takes the mark. Free kick for Shepherding. No. No, I thought there might have been a free, but uh, Malik Ellis has paid the mark, and he is 40 metres out on a difficult angle. And the Cats are throwing everything at Hawthorne in the first 10 minutes of the last quarter. They need a goal. Malik Ellis hooks it, misses. And so another chance goes begging, and the Cats have kicked 1-4 in eight and a half minutes in this final term, and they trail by 33 points, but they haven't given it away, and the grand final is still alive and well. Now Pritchard at fullback, directing traffic. He wants some movement. Pritchard is uh, Langford out there, rather, but it's uh, kick in by Langford to Pritchard, but it goes beyond him, and uh, marking in front of Dippy Domenico is Bruns. Now Bruns on the half-forward line, squares it towards Malakellis, and Flanagan from behind, third in line, has marked about 45 metres out from goal. It's his eighth mark. He'll kick from 50 to the punt road goal. Flanagan from two paces, drop punts. It's on its way. There's plenty on it, and he's, oh, he's beaten the pack by about 10 metres, and he's put it through for Geelong's 15th, coming at the nine-minute mark in the final term. Geelong 15 11 101. They're back to 27 points now. Hawthorne 19 14 128. And a great display. Uh, Crackers, you want to say a bit about the big fella because his game really has been terrific. He has taken on Greg, Greg, Greg Deer from uh, quarter time and absolutely slaughtered him. That was a really cap off goal. Good mark and a big kick. And uh, they're back in there with a little bit of a chance. 27 points. Nine and three quarter minutes in. Flanagan and Deer, they share the honours this time. There's a scrimmage and the Cats win it out of the centre. I think it was Buse. Stoneham runs with the flight of the ball and can't mark. Hits the ground. Uh, diving after it, Stoneham. Hand pass to Malakellis, just outside 50. Short pass to Ablett. 30 metres out. Slight angle. Ten minutes into the last quarter. It's a replica of the third so far. The Cats look fresher. The Hawks still, I don't believe, are sure that they've got this grand final won. And the Cats are throwing everything at them, trying to mow them down. But what a formidable, formidable foe they have to cut down as Ablett lines them up for number seven. In he comes. It is good. He's done it. And the difference is just 21 points. Ten and a half minutes into the last quarter. Hawthorne 19, 14, 128. Geelong 16, 11, 107. Tommy, it's alive. Well, it is, but there's a bad mistake by that young fellow, Madigan. He should have thumped that ball. We've kept on talking about it all day long. The ball should have been belted back over the centre circle. And that just shows you what can happen with a bad mistake and lack of discipline. Now that's right alive, get, you're not going to give Gary Abbott too many chances. Now Pritchard is lame and Karen is uh, he's got an injury up in the forward pocket. Hawthorne 128, Geelong 107, centre bounce, one by Deer. Let's see, it's a chance there for Condon, but he lost his footing. The loose ball goes to Bruns, it's going Geelong's way now, the loose ball. Kicks up towards centre-half forward. And with, uh, the mark has been taken at centre-half back by Langford. Langford plays on quickly, as we've got a spectator on the ground, we'll ignore him. 
Kicks the ball out towards Anderson. Yes, it's Batman in the middle of the MCG. Anderson gets a position. Handball over the top to Pritchard, who does well because he's suffering injury. Kicks up towards Burton. The ball punched away by Darcy. It's picked up there by Boz. Almost to play on, but knocked away by Condon. Unfortunately for him, it goes towards Bues. He gets a hand pass to Couch. He's surrounded by four players. Oh, he just got out of jail, but not quite. There's a chance for Karen. Karen kicks towards full forward. Dunstall uses his body superbly. He's marked 25 metres out directly in front. Hawthorne 19 14. Geelong 16 goals 11. And Dunstall, who has kicked three goals three, should eat this one from 35 metres out directly in front. And just about make a certainty of back to back premierships for the Hawthorne team. Only 12 minutes gone in the quarter, though. The kick by Dunstall is true. That's his fourth. Geelong 16 11 107 and Hawthorne advanced to 20 14 134 they just can't pick them back can they Stan no and I don't want to harp on this because uh, it, but it really is just uh, I, I'm annoyed I mean there's a situation of a player Andrew Buse has the ball looking towards his goals and he handballs to a man who as he's back to the play and has to then swing around he's surrounded by players and Paul Couch I mean really just showed he's just one side of the body he was caught out wouldn't use his right or left foot to kick the balls tried to beat the players they're under pressure bang rebound football goal to the Hawks another one blown by the Cats official attendance 94,796 Cats out of the centre uh, Couch hand pass to Bairstow kick to half forward Scott front position against Collins no one there at ground level when it hits the ground though for the Cats Hawthorne in control hand pass Madigan wasn't so good in goes Scott for Hawthorne but loses it to Whitman he loses it now Ablett well tackled by his brother-in-law Tuck forces the kick to fall out into the pocket Hamilton and Brownless there for Geelong Hamilton pursued by two Hawthorne defenders. They force the ball 30 metres around the halfback flank. Dipper keeps it in play. Gets a hand pass off to Whitman. He relieves back to the centre line, but Big Flanagan in the way again. What a game he's played. Takes the mark forward of centre. Kicks to half forward to Stoneham. Front position, he marks. He marked just inside 50. He'll kick from just outside the painted line on the ground. He can kick that far. We're at the 14-minute mark of the last quarter and still, I believe there is a chance for the Cats to get up and snatch this. But this is a very important kick. The difference is 27 points. As Stoneham deliberates, drop punters on its way. It is a lovely kick. It is home and hosed. Stoneham's second goal. And the Cats again are within 21 points. Hawthorne 2014-134. Geelong 17, 11, 113. And if we remember it for nothing else, we'll remember it for the Cats. Desperate tenacity, refusing to say die, and Hawthorne's steadiness as they've led all the way. We're well, well summed up, Tim, I believe. Of course, now, and we've said it a number of times, the Cats must kick the next goal. I mean, if Hawthorne now rebounds back, that will really break their heart. But if they can hang on and they kick the next one, even if it takes four or five minutes, they have a chance. They've outscored them 15-12 since quarter time. From the centre bounce, the ball knocked on by Geelong, but straight to Mew. Mew's kick from half-back, looking for Burton at centre-half forward. The ball spills behind the pack. Who will emerge? Yes, it's Geelong by Boss. Boss kicks the ball out wide. Knocked on by Greg Deere. Dippy Domenico first to get there. Threads his kick through the pack. Kicks in towards half forward. Bit of shepherding going on. Whitman in the front position. Good harassment there by Bearstow, but I think he helped Morrissey onto the ball, who left foots for goal and has missed from 40 metres out and has put it through for behind. 15 minutes, we're midway through the final term. Hawthorne 2015, Geelong 17 11. That's 135 to 113. Kick from uh, Schultz back into play to the outer side. Brereton up almost took a fine mark. It's uh, knocked away from him, though. It hits the ground. Linder over the ball, paddles it. But Bacanara first there. Might have been pushed. He was and will get a free kick about 70 metres from goal. The ball, meanwhile, had been kicked up to the centre. Will have to be returned to Bacanara, who will drive at goalward for the Hawks. And now a huge test for the cat defence. Dipper's come down from the wing, unmanned, and taken the mark. And then been pushed. He picks himself up, plays on, goes for goal, and misses. So Hawthorne with two opportunities wasted. They lead by 23 points, 136 to 113. 16 minutes last quarter, about 15 minutes left, and it's been a fantastic grand final. Shaw's looking for a target. There's one on the uh, member side wing, and it was Cameron. They've got the numbers there, uh, Geelong. Cameron's marked it. Yes, he's being paid just outside 50. So he picked the right option, uh, Schultz. He could have gone anywhere. Now, let's see. 
It's Cameron. Now, Dipper's over the mark. He's forced to kick hurriedly. It may be OK. Stoneham can't raise the gallop. Bew does well, uses his body. Kicks the ball back towards half forward, where the mark is almost taken there by uh, Whitman. Uh, he's on all fours, hovering over the ball. The ball spills towards the 50-metre line. Hawthorne's still relentless, going forward. Picked up by Cameron. Kicks the ball across the half-back line. Geelong have the numbers. Tucky is there. He's out number two to one. Getting there first is Bews. Bews on the half-back line. Kicks it to Hamilton. On the bounce. Can he get away from Madigan? No, doesn't try. He tries to kick beyond him, he does. Up towards Abbott, one grab, not the second. Malakalis, he's always trying to pick up the ball in the forward pocket. He'll need support. Gets his left boot in towards uh, Couch, in towards centre-half forward. Punched away by Langford, helped on by Deer. But oh, a high tackle on a Hawthorne player. And Hawthorne get out of jail with a free kick, but it was legitimate. And Anderson will get it at centre-half back. Ablett might be kicking goals, but Langford's doing a terrific job on him. At centre half back, uh, Pritchard it is who kicks to the wing, where from behind Lindner flies and gets a thumping spoil. But Tuck roves at the front of the pack, covers the ball with his body, looks for a free and gets it and is lucky, I reckon, as he played for it. Used all the experience of his 36 years and uh, 380 odd games and takes it between centre half back and centre. Poised to become Hawthorne's first back-to-back -back premiership captain. Kicks towards Brereton's lead out near the wing. He can't mark. Condon at the front of the pack. Tackled by Bruns. Hand pass to Bacanara. Hand pass back to Brereton. No, to Curran. He has to go backwards to Brereton. He goes to Deer, who gets another one on towards uh, Condon, who rides a bump. Kicks with the left boot, but badly. Onto the ball is Gary Hocking. Desperate hand pass out towards Cameron and Flanagan. Well done, Flanagan. Shrugged the tackle. Hand pass to Couch, who's in the clear. Kicks beyond the centre. Stone and between two almost took the mark but he hasn't been paid Kennedy swoops hand pass to Bacanara kick back into attack for Hawthorne it's out of bounds the umpire approaching play and indicating a Hawthorne free kick and it goes to Dippy Domenico who kicks up to Dunstall's lead in the pocket spoiled from Schultz thumps it over the boundary line for a throw in about 40 meters around from the behind post 18 and a half minutes gone, the Hawks by 23 points, and I don't know now whether the Cats have got the legs to do it. Boundary throw in 40 metres away from uh, Hawthorne's goal. Burton got the tap, but straight to a Geelong player who couldn't break clear. The ball is fluky, which way will it go? Gary Hocking's hand pass out towards Besto. Good work there by Buccanara as Besto is about to kick the ball. Loose ball picked up by Linder on the point of the square at half back. Flanagan uh, gets a path for him. Linder goes long, looking for Abbott. He's got the, he's got the front position. Does well, picks up 35 metres out, Abbott. He's kicked. Goal. He's kicked his eighth goal. Gary Ablett at the 19-minute mark in the final term. Scoreboard at the MCG. It's only 15 points the difference. Hawthorne 2016, 136. Geelong 18, 11, 119. Stan, then a quick word from Tommy. Yeah, well, I just felt that uh, the cats were gone and there was nobody out to lift them, but it came down to the performance then of Linda. But more importantly, that man Flanagan, he ran he's, he ran about 30 metres to lay on a shepherd. That, that man is the inspiration for the cats if they get back, not only G. Ablett. They are the things that win the premierships, but Gary with eight goals, even though Lank has done a great uh, job, he's just magic. 20 minutes in, the Cats within 17 points, Flanagan the knock but ineffective, socket by Deer to half forward, out comes Stephen Hocking, kicks at the ball while it's in flight, gets it towards Couch who's tackled and dispossessed, Gary Hocking a hand pass nowhere, but Boss runs onto it, on the wing, he gallops, he kicks to half forward, Ablett's there, front position, he goes lunging forward out of the pack, Hamilton onto the loose ball, swings a goal with the right boot and he's put it through! It's a goal to the Cats in the margin, 11 points. 20 and a quarter minutes into the last quarter. Just when I thought the Cats were dead, they have found life again. Hawthorne 2016-136, Geelong 1911-125, and it could yet be the year of the Cat. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I nearly started the barrage. <laughs> Somebody help me. <laughs> I want to go to the toilet. Can they, can they do it? They, they've still got the legs, and Hawthorne has still have got self. They've got to get out of the centre of this one now. From the centre bounce, up goes Flanagan. Well, pretty uh, even in the ruck. He'll get first possession out of the centre. Buccaneer has just been called on the ball by Anderson, who's uh, probably out of legs, and there'll be a secondary ball up. Hawthorne 2016, 136. Geelong 1911 125 21 minutes into the final term in the VFL Grand Final there's the secondary ball up, knocked by Flanagan Tuck couldn't get a possession, Malakalis is there hand pass goes to Bruns, high tackle on Bruns, picked up by Dippy Domenico oh. kicks in towards half forward oh it's a good bounce for Hawthorne, hand pass by Bacanara, over the top to Anderson fires for goal and has kicked it Anderson gets another one 
That's his fourth. And the irony of that was he called Bacchanar in to take the centre. And he was the one that broke loose and scored the goal. Hawthorne 21-16, 142, Geelong 19-11, 1-25. Yeah, and there's the value of that quick kick out of the pack. It really was just desperate stuff from both sides. It could have gone either way, but luckily for the Hawks, they won it and was kicked out, and they had the numbers, uh, namely Buckenauer and Anderson there, and Anderson's gone on, and uh, that's his fourth goal in uh, what has been an excellent display by Dean Anderson. Let me say this before anyone else does. Whatever the result, it has been the epic grand final that we all hope we might see to end the 80s. At the bounce of the ball, it favours Deer, but Flanagan still gets there and beats him. Bacanara knocks it back down to Condon, who kicks it 10 metres, but straight to Buse, who's got it in the centre circle. Geelong needing three goals in about eight or nine minutes to snatch the grand final. He kicks towards Ablett, who flies from behind and can't mark. Hamilton again at the fall of the ball. Hooks it back with the left boot. Scott versus Collins. Edge of the goal square. No one can mark, but taken away by McGuinness for Hawthorne. Steadies. Delivers with the right boot out in front of Whitman, who collects it on the half-back flank. He kicks to the wing, towards uh, Morrissey, who runs with the flight. Oh, perfect kick bounce just inside the boundary line. Then hopped over for a throw-in just on Hawthorne's attacking side of the wing. The Hawks have their jaws around it. We're 23 minutes last quarter, and they lead by 17 points. Geelong need three goals. They've got uh, about eight minutes or seven minutes in which to do it. A boundary throw-in. Just down from the wing with uh, the Hawthorne team just marginally into, a, into attack. And the ball thumped uh, towards the boundary line again by Brereton. Just eroding a few seconds away on the time clock. Hawthorne 21-16, Geelong 19-11. A boundary throw in once again. Which way will it go? Brereton there, takes the ball out of the air. Does get his boot to it, kicks up towards 50. Curran is there, the ball breaks through. OK for Tippi Domenico. Lines up, left foot kicking towards goal. It's going to bounce, but across and through for a behind to Hawthorne, which will make it four scoring shots now for Geelong, and it seems to be out of their reach. Three Hawthorne, goals for a draw. 21-17, Geelong 19-11. I'd love to come back and see more of this next week as Schultz puts the ball back into play straight down the middle. Flanagan their chance, couldn't mark, good spoil by Deer. At the fall of the ball, the Cats a chance. Hand pass towards Gary Hocking, but he overruns it. Tuck snatches it away from him. Hand pass to Whitman, but a bad kick. Straight to Steve Hocking. Hand pass to Hamilton. Hand pass to Bairstow, who's got a hectare out on the wing. He has one bounce. He deliberates. He passes towards Scott, who marks. 35 metres out, 45 degree angle. It's kickable on the southern side of the ground. We're less than a minute away from time on, but if he kicks this, a couple of goals in time on could still snatch it. In he comes, close to the man on the mark. It's not a good kick. He made a mess of it. It's a behind. And the Cats need three goals to put their bibs in front. Then 19-12-126 to Hawthorne, 21-17, 143. 24 and a half minutes have gone. The kick in by Langford from the punt road goal. Deer gives him something to uh, lead to a target at centre-half back. Up goes Deer, can't mark. He tried to punch away in the finish, but he missed it. The ball comes down, the chance here for Couch. Couch is short kicking to the centre, where he's found Malakellis on the attacking side of the centre, but just a bit too short there, Geelong. Kick by Malakellis, a long one, looking for Ablett. He's got his body in front. Langford does reasonably well. Off the pack, Langford all gets the good bounce. It could have gone to Scott, but the luck of the draw there. Brun shows courage for Dippy Domenico. They both show courage. It's just outside Geelong's 50 at centre-half forward, and there'll be a ball up 60 metres out from goal. Into time on by 13 seconds in the grand final. About four minutes remaining. Hawthorne 21-17. Geelong 19 goals 12. A ball up. Centre half forward. The Cats into attack at the punt road end. Up goes Flanagan. Deers work tirelessly. Thor Flanagan does well. Gets it down to Buse. Hand pass on towards Stoneham. Can he produce something in the dying moments? He can't. He's been outpointed today by Mew. And there'll be a ball up again. This time the angle has been increased for Geelong and the distance decreased by about five metres. Just outside 50 in front of Bay 13. The Cats desperately needing a goal. I've said it a number of times today. I apologise if you're sick of hearing it, but if they can't get one from this thrust, I think it's over. Flanagan and Deer, the 14s. What a contest it's been. Bacanara gets a hand pass out of the pack. He goes for the refuge of the boundary line and finds it. Geelong's half forward flank, but a long, long way from goal. About 80 metres out on the southern side as they kick to the Jolly Mod end of the MCG for those who know the ground. Deer gets the knock at the throw in towards Dippy Domenico. The battling Bearstow, who's been heroic for the Cats today, fights for it but can't keep it in play, and it's over the line. The Cats last came to the MCG for a grand final 22 years ago, and that Richmond Geelong game 
is still remembered as an epic, but perhaps this one will rival it. As at the throw in, it comes to Geelong's attacking side. Hand pass gives Bruns a chance. 40 metres out. Centering kick for Brownless. Sets himself. Ablett! Ablett's marked it. He can go for the grand final record of nine goals. He's on a horrendous angle. But it's not the bad angle. He's in the left forward pocket, so for his right boot, he can do it. We're at the 27 minute mark, and yet again, this must be life number nine for the Cats. In comes Ablett. He's done it! The Cats live again. The margin, once again, 11 points at the 27 minute mark. Stanley Alves, can you speak? Oh, yes, I can. And I, I, I look, there, there's a lot of people here today who barrack for Geelong, and there's a lot of people barrack for, for Hawthorne, and everybody else is just being treated to a magnificent display by that man Ablett, he is giving his side a chance and uh, oh look there's only a couple of minutes left but with a bloke like that down there if they can get the ball down quickly and they're lifting with Flanagan doing well in the ruck this game is still up for the grabs despite all the silly errors and mistakes they've made they can still win this the Cats it's been a 10 goal quarter centre bounce up they go, knocked down by Deer first possession goes to Whitman gets Hawthorne going forward Eroding seconds on the time clock as he kicks wide out towards the practice pitch area. Condon goes to ground. He loses possession to, to Neville Bruns. Bruns there being harassed but gets his kick in. Up towards the wing. Punched away by Madigan. Couch will get there first. Does well to keep it in. He was grabbed. Didn't have the ball and the ball trickles over for a boundary throw in. Hawthorne by 11 points. 21-17. 143. Geelong 2012. 132. Three minutes of added time. Deer and Flanagan nullify each other. The ball uh, won by Whitman, who kicks it forward for Hawthorne. Buck and Arik, or Morrissey couldn't mark. Kicks it the wrong way off the ground. Cats a chance in the centre, but now it's picked up by Morrissey again. Great hand pass to Pritchard. Pritchard kicks to half forward to, to Curran, who's got the sit and takes the mark. Just inside 50, but out near the boundary line. It's a very difficult shot. So now the Hawks with the chance to really put the indelible stamp on it, to take it past the point of no return for Geelong. Peter Curran, who played a tremendous first half, faded a bit in the second, has kicked three goals. This a very difficult shot. The Hawthorne fans outnumbered here today, perhaps about eight to one, but they'll just about bring the house down if he kicks this. Geelong fans booing in distraction. Curran kicks, he's hooked it. He hasn't kicked a goal. And still the Cats have an outside chance. We're at the 29-minute mark. 144 plays 132. I'd say that's made it safe for the Hawks. Geelong's best hope is a draw. Darcy goes short towards Bewes on the half-back line who has to trap the ball on the bounce. Runs away from Brereton up towards the 50-metre line he's defending. Comes around our broadcast side. Let's see, Collins will get there first and he works the ball towards the boundary line being harassed by Scott. He did well, Collins. A boundary throw in. Hawthorne lead by 12 points in the grand final. Four and a half minutes of added time. Boundary throw in. Knocked down by Flanagan. Couch emerges with the ball, but he's tackled beautifully by Pritchard. Handball back to Hamilton. Kick up towards half forward. David Cameron tries to help the ball on. Collins, who was up the ground a short time ago, is at centre half back defending. And his uh, foot pass, luckily and flukily, has been marked by Pritchard just wide of centre. 30 minutes. Pritchard taking plenty of time. And the Hawthorne coaching uh, bench looking a little more relaxed now as Jeans prepares to come out. Brian Coleman, the chairman of selectors there too. Kicked by Pritchard towards half-forward. Punched away by Schultz. Loose ball goes to Gary Hocking. Kicks right across the half-back line. A bit of a nothing kick as Dippy Domenico almost had a chance to mark. Loose ball goes to uh, Hamilton. Kicks up towards Scott. On the point of the square at half-forward, he's trying to pick it up. He runs about 60 metres out. The lead there from Cameron. And David Cameron's marked 40 metres out from goal. He's right in front. He's got to hurry and have a kick because Geelong's best chance only is a draw. They trail by two goals. He's taking far too much time. Far too much time. He'll kick from 45 metres out. Directly in front. David Cameron has drop punted for goal. He's put it through. And there's a goal the difference. 31 minutes up on the clock. In this epic grand final, Hawthorne 21-18, Geelong 21-12. And this centre bounce, Stanley, how crucial this is. Oh, we, well, Tommy often talks about getting the ball out of the centre. If ever there's a time to win it, it's right now. Perhaps the greatest of all time. 
Alan Jean's down inside the fence now. There's nothing he can do. He's just got to hope Hawthorne can hold the ball in. At the bounce, Deer beats Flanagan. Who can get it cleanly? Abuse for Geelong, but nowhere to go. There must be 20, 30 players in there, and if not quite 30, eventually a ball up. Hawthorne gained about five metres. 31 minutes, 35 seconds gone in the last quarter. Hawthorne by a goal. At the bounce, Flanagan brings it down to Buse. Well tackled by Curran. The ball hits the deck again. Is sat on by 20 players and the umpire comes in and will ball it up once more. There's nowhere to go for the Cats. I think time... That's it!